Hey, welcome back. You're, I just want to appreciate you here because this is a busy time of year for all of us. And I like doing this masterclass this time of year, super short videos, because I do think while everybody is winding the year down, we're also most of us thinking about the next year. And this, this is really intended to you know, help you get a head start on that. So um, I'm going to do a quick recap of the last two videos. So the first one was this that just these are just examples like if you have a narrative about your health that you're lazy rather than you're demoralized you're going to approach your new year's resolutions very differently same in the area of relationships if you see your spouse is weak and your children is only trying to outsmart you then you're you're not going to appreciate that they're testing things out and that maybe a request or complaint is coming from a place of vulnerability and you'll respond very differently depending on the narrative that you put to the particular behavior the same over here if you see your team customers clients this is all marketplace stuff as everybody just wants something for nothing and that's really different than if you go like i'm a part of the human race and people want a meaningful way to earn money and to spend money you you'll respond very differently to requests and complaints then we moved into the, our what we call the more map around here i really a narrative that i would like people to be okay with is that I would like more in my marriage or more with my children or, uh, you know, I would like to be able to earn more and have more wealth and have more capacity, you know, because I would like to make a bigger mark, I would like to leave a legacy. So this whole idea of more and in the area of being and doing, I see nothing wrong with that. And if all goes well, you know, people stay what we call above the line. An irony that I talked about yesterday is that when you have a feeling of I'm enough and I have enough, I am enough, I have enough, interestingly, you end up with more. So that's a little narrative shift, a simple one that you can start working on right now. So today, what are we doing? We're going to spend some time in this idea of below the line because part of what happens up here is there's a feeling of unity and power. And if things don't go well and you end up below the line, there's a real feeling of powerlessness powerlessness in a belief, really. There's often a belief of, um, you know, like there's anger and aggression. You know, it's okay to be have some anger, but when it becomes a part of like, this is my identity, that's a whole other thing. Same over here. Um, you know, people get broken hearts, but um, if, if what goes on is, you know, there's no, there's no grieving, just unresolved um, longing, then there's this sort of continual living below the line. And you can't, it's hard to get more of these when you're just continually living below the line. So I thought I would go over a couple of narrative shifts that you can make today. So one of them has to do with this idea of victim versus victimology. Victimology, every, I hate to say this, but most of us are the victims of something. Vic, you have so you probably don't have any choice in terms of your being a victim. Somebody is going to do something wrong that's going to hurt you. Sometimes they do it with intentionality. Sometimes it's a pattern that goes on for days or years. It's one thing to be the victim. Am I spelling that right? Whatever. It's one thing to be the victim. It's a whole other thing to adopt a narrative of victimology. And victimology is basically in any room somebody here is trying to hurt people. So this is a very, like, this is a thing to keep an eye on because that keeps you below the line for sure. There's another thing that keeps people um, below the line and it's a sense of entitlement. Now, this is especially true here. Entitlement, now let's just be super clear. There are things you're entitled to, but there might be some things that you feel you're entitled to that you're not entitled to. When the pandemic first happened, for as, in, as an example, I don't know if you did, but I got mad about it. And at some point I realized, oh, guess what kind of entitlement narrative I have. I have an entitlement narrative that I was entitled to live an entire life without experiencing a worldwide event like a pandemic. You know, World War I, World War II, those people were entitled also, right? To live a life without a World War I, World War II, or are they these until until we create a world where we can cooperate around things like worldwide events, then we're going to have worldwide events happening. So are we entitled to a worldwide event free 
life, maybe not so much. So it helped me. My anger went right away when I went, ooh, I've got some entitlement around that. Um, that's one to keep an eye on for sure. You, there, you are entitled to some things, but not other things. Um, this one primarily connects over here. This one, um, this one is a is a belief that there's only one. And you know, the world only has one person who could love me who I could love. Or there's only, you know, there's only one job that would make me happy. There's only one whatever. And and that generally, this is if you can replace that with a sense of abundance. Like there's a lot on the planet. There are a lot of people who are full of love. There are lots of ways to earn a living. So you really have to move into a narrative of abundance. You want to move into, um, you know, a narrative like I'm only entitled to what I've actually earned, um, except, and then things like human rights, those sorts of things. And you really want to keep an eye on this and make sure that being a victim does not turn into a, um, a narrative of victimology being a main thing. Okay, that's a lot for today. Um, see you tomorrow. Oh, you know, quick before I stop recording, um, this really is my life's work. I think I'm extraordinarily good at it. I've been doing it for over 40 years and I know you love somebody who could use these. So just consider forwarding these emails and these videos onto that person.